All right, I hope everyone had a good uh, holiday weekend. I know yesterday my classes, everyone was asleep, so hopefully you all have woken up since the four-day weekend, or three-day weekend, what was it, three-day weekend? Um, I will start class with, with asking questions if you have any questions over homework, but I wanted to show you something first, a uh, little bit of a change to our videos. Um, I was having problems with the videos being cut off and everything, so I've converted everything over to YouTube now. So when you click on Recorded Class Lectures in Canvas, it should redirect you to a YouTube page. And this is our 303 Intermediate Algebra 11 AM Fall 2003 NVC. And what will happen is you'll have listed here the videos. It'll have the date, the day. So that was our first day, um, 11 AM class, second day, and then today will be the third day. And you can watch these, OK? Yeah, you can stream it on an iPad and things like that. So I'm, I'm real happy. The, the reason I never used that before was because uh, YouTube used to have a limit of 10 minutes. And then they bumped their videos where you can have 15 minutes. But if you actually go to your YouTube settings, you can, you can uh, check a box and it takes the 15 minute limit off. And you can get basically, well, hours of video. So this is what I'm using now. There's also something else you should know about this. If you go up to my playlists on the side, it'll actually bring up all my, all my um, playlists for all my different classes. And there's not a whole lot here that you would want to look at, Cal 1, Cal 2. But there is something here that I did about 10 years ago. Some videos I made back when I lived in a little apartment. I was a bachelor and I had my little office with a little whiteboard and I made some videos on factoring and solving quadratic equations. I still have those videos so I just decided to put them up here. So if you're having any issues on that sort of thing, yeah. so well, hold on, that should have on the side here, whoa, everything froze up on me here. There we go. Whoa. So on the right hand side, you can see the list. And I have things like, you know, solving linear equations, factoring quadratic equations, solving quadratic equations. So if you want, you can go take a look at that. Because those are all things you should know already coming in here. So there's a place you can go review. All right. So that's that. Um, attendance. Let's try this attendance again because. I think the tables are kind of where we're going to be, and it's much faster if I can just check everyone off. So I want to make sure everyone, everyone's in the right place. Let's see, today's Wednesday. Let's see here. We have Teresa. Okay, and then who else is at that table now? Where were you? Were you a different place? Okay, you're going to, you're going to be in that, that's where you want to be? Okay, I'm going to. I think I have to edit you, but I'll get that next time. And then let's see, Roy, and then Robert, right? And then Nor Norberto, sir, where are you? Right here? Okay. Let me edit this real fast. And you're, you're okay sitting there from now on? Okay. All right, let's go back corner. We have Riley and Haley. Where were you? Oh, there you are. I see you. I see you. Okay. And then, let's see, Jacqueline. And then Renee, and then who's over there with you? Okay, so I'm gonna move you to that table, is that all right? And then over here, let's see. 
Tiffany. So this is Tiffany and then Amber. Let's see. Jones here. Amber Page. No. Nicole. So we're going to move you. Let's see. John. And then Matt. Matthew. So we're going to move you, Nicole, right there. Are you happy right there? Yes. Kristen? No? We're going to throw Kristen over here next to Joan. Jonathan Perez? Let's see. Kristen's here. Sarah? Uh, but you're over there now. So, <clears throat> Sean? And who's back there? Eric? Okay. That's fine. We'll see. I mean, hopefully after a little bit of time, this will all... Yeah. So Eric and Sean are together, right? And it was Nicole? No. Sarah. That's right. Sarah's going to be over there. I'm going to put you all like that. Okay, so Sarah's here. Ah. Oh. And Eric's here. Nicole is here. And let's see, am I missing anybody? Jonathan Perez? Okay. Hopefully this will go a little smoother next time, all right? I do have your grades posted for your first um, assignment. Did anyone happen to check their grades? It, it wouldn't show it? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Clicked it. It didn't do. Okay, I'll have to look into it. Maybe there's a setting I haven't released it or something. All right, let's get down to business. Questions on homework? Anything like that? Yes. 79. So we're working out of 8.1, correct? And which one was it? 79. Okay. Page 529. Number 79, square root 24b to the ninth power. All right, let's go ahead and do this problem. So the instructions here are to simplify the radical, right? Simplify this. So what we'd like to do is kind of look at it like we did last class. We have a number and then a variable. So we, we kind of split this up into two radicals. We did the 24 separated from the b to the ninth. And I was saying in class that I thought that the easier of these two would be the variable, right? So you look at the power on the variable nine and you say, how many times is two going to nine? Four times, right? With one left over. So this would turn into a b to the fourth outside the, the radical. And then inside we'd have the one b left over, right? Is that okay? All right, now with the 24, what we're gonna do is on the side, we're gonna try and break 24 down to be the product of two numbers, hopefully one of them being a perfect square. So can you think of any two numbers that multiply to be 24? Six and four? I'm gonna write four times six. It's okay, it doesn't matter, but I always like to put the perfect square first. Is that all right? So now this next line can read square root four times six. And now I break up the square root four times square root six. I still have b to the fourth square root b. But what is the square root of four? Two, still have square root of six. Now can the square root of six break down? So I'm trying to come up with two numbers that multiply to be six. Two and three are the only ones, right? And Neither two nor three are perfect squares, so you cannot break six down. And then we have b to the fourth, square root b. 
Now the only thing left to do here is to combine the two things that don't have the square root together and then to take the square root of 6 and square root of b and put those two together back underneath one root. So the 2 and the b to the fourth become a 2 b to the fourth. And then square root, inside the square root, what do I put? 6b. And that's it. Does that, ag does that address the question that you had on that? Okay. Any others? Seventy-seven. Okay, yeah, seventy-seven should go pretty, pretty quick. So on number seventy-seven, same page, you have square root thirty-six s to the seventh, which again I'll break up as the number and the variable separated. I'll do the s to the seventh first. So how many times does two go into seven? Three times. So I'll write an s to the third. I did have one left over, right? So square root s. But then what's the square root of 36? 6. It's a perfect square. So we can automatically go straight to 6. And there's nothing left to do. Right? We have the 6. We have s cubed. We have square root of s. So we're there. Number 9. Where is number? Wait, same. On 495? Excluded values? That one? Okay. So we're working now off of page 495, looking at number 9. It gives you a function f of t. So they're using t instead of x. 3t over 5 plus t, ooh, 5 plus t plus 10. It's saying, tell me what you cannot plug in, right? I mean, that's what excluded values are. So the only thing I see here that may cause a problem is the fact that I have a fraction over here, right? And I know that with fractions, you can never have a denominator of zero. So I look at my denominator. 5 plus t, and I ask myself, basically, 5 plus t, when would that be 0, right? That's my question. When would that be 0? So that's a linear equation for t. Just solve for t, so move the 5 to the other side, subtracting 5 on both sides. And you get t equals negative 5. That's my only excluded right there. Yeah, you only have to worry with, with excluded values, you only have to worry about what would cause division by zero. At this point, we, there's other issues that could come up, but for, for these, for rational functions, that's all you have to worry about. Yes? Um, I always have a two or multiple the same one? Yes. Okay. And it seems like the mm hmm. T does not equal negative 5, right? Like this. What that means, well, it depends. Did she put equal or not equal? Okay. Um, this is called set notation. It's just a mathematical way of writing the answer. And I'm not real big on this at this point. What, what this means, just so you know, whenever you put the braces around something, that means you have a set of answers. Okay, this is your set. Now, what does your set consist of? This means all t values, all t's, okay, this line means such that, <laughs> and this says what? Well, t can't be 5. Can't be negative 5. <laughs> yes D but just so you know that that's what it means it means look it wants to know 
what you can and can't plug in, right? This is saying all the T's, you can plug any T you want such that the T you plug in is not negative five. As long as you plug in a T that's not negative five, it's okay. I just want you to know that, look, negative five is the only number you can't plug in. So you just put T equals negative five, that's our excluded. That's sufficient for what I want, yes. 13. So same thing, we have H of X equals 12. I said same thing, Me wait, I'm doing the wrong problem. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, 13, H of T equals T squared minus 7T plus 12 all over T squared plus 7T minus eight. So same thing, meaning give me the excluded values. So again, because we have a fraction, you look at the denominator, you say to yourself, okay, what would make this denominator zero, right? What makes it zero? That's our question. Whatever makes that zero is excluded. Now, the left side of that equation is not linear. It's quadratic. So the only way to figure this out is to factor the left side. You could also use quadratic formula. You could also complete the square. You can also, there's a bunch of different techniques, right? So I'll let you pick since you asked, what technique would you use to solve that? Would you do like an AC method or something or? AC method? Okay, if you do AC method, you identify the number in front and the number in the back, right? That's the way you would do it? And you multiply those two? No? Should I just proceed? I'll just proceed. You multiply those two numbers and you get negative eight. Then you take the number in the middle, which is seven, and it's positive. And this, I showed you this before, right? You come up with two numbers that multiply you have to multiply to be this, but add up to be this. So what two numbers do that? Negative one and positive eight. Right? If you multiply those two numbers, you get negative eight. You add them, you get positive seven. Negative one. Yes? How I chose them? You always take the, the coefficient, the number in front of the squared variable. So in this case, the number in front of t squared, which is 1. You multiply it times the number in the back that's by itself, which is negative 8. That's why I have that arrow going across. That's where you get this negative 8. And then the 7 right here always comes from here. OK? Now, it, it just depends on how you want to do this, how you're taught. <clears throat> this is the, the, the AC method with grouping. You write down the two ends. So in other words, you write down the T squared, you write down the negative eight. But then on the plus seven T, instead of writing plus seven T, I use the two numbers I just got, negative one and eight. And I write minus one T plus eight T. Because minus 1t plus 8t is really 7t. So what we've done is we've, we've broken the 7t down into two things, and that will allow us to do grouping. So we slash the first, we, we separate the first two and second two terms. In the first two, we factor out a t. The second two, we factor out a positive 8. And then from there, it turns into t minus 1, t plus 8 equals zero. Now, I don't mind going through that in more detail and explaining everything to anyone in the class, okay, on how AC method works for, for factoring, but I can't spend a lot of time on it. I can show you the steps, but if you want to, like, revisit all that, please come by, see me, go to the tutoring lab, ask them for AC method with grouping, and they can show you more of these, give you examples to work yourself. But that's more of a 0302 topic, so we want to make sure that this right here is okay with you. Now, from here, you set each of these equations, or sorry, each of the factors equal to zero. 
and you get two answers, 1 and negative 8. And so these are your two excluded values. That's right. T cannot be 1, or else you're going to have division by 0. And T cannot be negative 8, or else you're going to have division by 0. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'm, I'm mostly on a test going to be looking at all your work. And if at the end you, you, you state it in a way that's confusing, I'll still give you credit as long as you've got it down to there. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to... We're going to move on to, uh, we're going to continue 8-1 because we never finished 8-1 last time. There's uh, just a couple of things we need to still do with 8-1. So 8-1, uh, we were doing square roots and simplifying. What we never did was adding and subtracting. So today what we're going to do is adding, subtracting, and then we're going to move into 8.2. We're going to do multiplying, and that'll be it. We're not going to do division with square roots. So adding and subtracting, yeah, that's, a, that's, a good, that's good news. Uh, it doesn't come up that much. That's why we don't cover it too much in here. You don't divide square roots that often. Mm, very rarely, yeah. Which is once every... Yeah, I don't know. So this yes, but we never did adding and subtracting. Adding and subtracting. So we're just continuing from last time. So let's let's take a look at an example first. All right. Let's say I have square root of three plus square root of three. And next to this, I want to put something. Square root of 3 times square root of 3. And I just want to compare what the left and the right would be and how they're different. On the left, we're actually adding, aren't we? And on the right, we're actually multiplying. Well, look, look at the right one first. We've done something like this before, haven't we? Square root 3 times square root 3. Anytime you had two roots like that, you could put them together and then put the threes back underneath, right? That, I mean, it's kind of like if we had square root of three times square root of three, I mean, sorry, root three times three under a root, we could split it into two, but we can go backwards too. If it's split, we can push them back in under a root. And then three times three is what? Nine. And that's three because it's a perfect square, right? Well, let's talk about what it is, okay? I mean, you have square root of 3 plus square root of 3. One instinct, don't write this down, you might think that that's square root of 6 because you're adding them together now, right? 3 plus 3. But that's not the way it works. The way it works is kind of like if I, if I asked you right now what's x plus x, what would everyone say? 2x, right? As opposed to x times x, that would be x squared, right? But x plus x is 2x, right? That's the difference. So what you're doing here is when you have x plus x, you're doing like 1x plus another x gives you two of them. We want to look at the root threes, these two, as kind of like being x's. It's like an apple and an apple, right? You have two of them, right? An apple plus an apple, you get two apples. It'll, this will be... 2 root 3, 2 of them. 1 plus 1 is 2. So the key is to look at the number that's in front of those roots. I'm going to erase the highlight there. There is a number in front of each of those roots, right? It's a 1. And it's like a multiplication. Hold on, sir. 1 here. One, and there's a one in front, right? So you're basically adding the two ones together to get the two. Now, <clears throat> let's try something else. What about 
2 square root of 5 minus 3 square root of 5 plus 7 square root of 5. So there, now, it's, now they're all square root 5s, right? So you have to kind of like squint your eyes again and look at that square root 5. That's the same as this. That's the same as this, right? They're all exactly the same. But you have two of them here, right? So I have two of them. And then here I have take away three of them and then add seven of them. So what's two minus three plus seven? Six, right? Two minus three plus seven is six. So this should turn out to be six square roots of five. So the idea here with addition and subtraction is that it, you got to be comparing apples and apples, right? All of these root fives are like, they're all apples. It's just how many do you have total? You all see that? The book does this slightly different. I want to show it to you just so you see it. The book does it like this. They take the square root of five and they factor it out. So see how everyone have the blue and yellow up there? Since every single one of those has a yellow, right? The square root five. You can pull the square root five out of each one of them, which is here. And then you can put all the blue ones together in parentheses like this. So that if you multiply this back through, you would get back what's up there. Now, you, whichever way makes most sense to you is the way you should do it. But you see, we, we get the same result. Not five times two. You would do two minus three plus seven, right? Two minus three plus seven in the parentheses. That's going to give you six. Then six times root five is just six times root five. You can't multiply the six into the root. The only way that two roots can go together is if you have two roots. Right, like I can do root three times root two. That would give me root six. But if I do root 3 times 2, right, separately, this is just 2 root 3. You can't put the 2 underneath with the 3 because the 2 wasn't under a root to start with. They both have to be under roots for you to be able to put them together. Okay, let's try something else. How about this is going to get a little more complicated. Is this example, how about 5 root 27 plus 4 square root of 3 minus the square root of 12. Now we want to be careful here because in the previous problems wasn't the square root the same in all of them? Like it was in the previous problem it was root 5, root 5, root 5. In the, pre in the problem before that was what? Root 3, root 3? So what was underneath the root was exactly the same in all of them. And therefore, they were apples, right? They were all apples. They were all oranges, so we could put them together. Here, square root of 27 is not the same as the square root of 3, right? And that is not the same as the square root of 12. So all of those are different. So you cannot combine them together if they're different. You can't say, oh, 5 of these plus 4 of them minus how many of the root 12s do we have? One of them, right? You can't do 5 plus 4 minus 1 because what's underneath the roots doesn't match. Does that make sense? But, but, each of those roots, root 27, root 3, root 12, we need to see if we can break them down. So I'm going to do a little line here. This is going to be like scratch work for me. Let's look at square root of 27 first. Now, we've done this before. This was last class. You take 27, you break it down, you try and get it to be two prime, or sorry, a perfect square. 27 is what times what? Three times nine. Three times nine, nine times three. So I'm not gonna show that step. I'm just gonna go straight to what this is. This is nine times three. 27 is nine times three. And then that's square root of nine times square root of three. And that's three root three. Agreed? Okay. Then we have, let me take the root 3. Yeah, this one is, 
Just root three. Can't do anything to it, right? Y'all, y'all understand what I'm doing is I'm taking the yellow, the blue, and the green. I'm inspecting all of those roots and seeing if I can break them down. So I still need to look at which one? Root 12. Now 12 breaks down to be four times three. Four is a perfect square. Square root of four is two, so I have two root three. Yeah, all of these now, if you look at all of our answers, right? Root 27 is really three root threes. Root three is just root three. And root 12 is really two root three, isn't it? So I'm going to go back to the original problem now. I'm going to rewrite the whole thing. So here I go. I'm going to take this and rewrite it. The first thing we have is five, right? And that's multiplication, isn't it? It's five times root 27. So I'm going to say five times, but instead of root 27, I'm going to use what root 27 turned out to be, which is three root three. So I'm put three root three. Then I have plus four times root three. I can't do anything with root three. Minus one times, what was root 12? Two square roots of three. Now one more thing before I put these together. I'm going to do these multiplications. What's 5 times 3? What's 4? Well, 4 is just 4. And what's 1 times 2? It's just 2, right? So I should get 15 root 3, correct? Plus 4 root 3. Then what? Minus 2 root 3. Now do you have all apples? Yes, you have root three, you have root three, you have root three. So what you look at then is the numbers in front. 15 plus four, take away two. So it's 15 plus four minus two, 17. So I should get 17 root threes. Answer. I'm going to do one more of these, and then I'd like to, to let you do a couple, all right? This next one's going to involve some variables, because I know you like variables. So how about, for this one, negative 2 root 20x plus 3 root 5x minus square root 80x. So like I said before, when you're adding and subtracting roots, what's underneath the root must be the same, right? Has to be the same. Right now, if I look at these, I have a root 20x. That is not the same as root 5x, right? And that's not the same as root 80x. So all those are different. However, I might be able to break those down. So here comes my scratch work. I'm going to start with the root 20x. Now remember, with the x, didn't we say, like, how many times does 2 go into whatever the power is? Like, the, the power on that x is really a 1, right? So 2 doesn't go into 1. So you're not going to be able to have an x pulled out on the outside. So the x is just going to be stuck underneath that root. It's not going to go anywhere. But the 20 can be broken down, right? 20 is really 4 times 5. I'm going to leave the x under there. That's really square root of 4 times square root of 5x. So now I'm splitting the root into 2. And that would give me 2 root 5x. Has anyone ever used a soda stream? You know what I'm talking about? Do you like it? You don't like it? What do you mean? Do you just use it for soda? Or do you use it for other flavors? 
Okay. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. Yeah. You like it? See, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence with it, so we'll see. Yeah, sorry. Yes. No, because what we're trying to do is I'm trying to take 20x, right? Just 20x and just rewrite it as any way I can. 4 times 5 times x is the same thing, isn't it? So you don't want to have an, an x also with the 4 and with the 5 because if you have an x with the 4 and the 5, then you have x squared. Okay? Good question. Okay, so I've broken down the square root 20x. Now the next thing is to break down which one? Root 5x? But, but can you break 5 down? And you can't do anything with the x, right? So this one is actually already just, you don't have to write it twice, but it, it, that's just to stress that it can't change. How about root 80x? So 80. 16 times 5, that's a good one. That's, that's the best one you're going to get because that'll take you right to the answer. Yes. And here's why I don't recommend that. Because if you put... No, you'll get the same thing, but what will happen here is... See, look at, look at what my next step is going to be. Because I put the 16, which is the perfect square first, right? Then on my next line, all I'm doing is splitting it into two square roots. And the split comes naturally right between the, six and the, and the, the 16 and the 5x. So the 16 goes under its own root. The 5x goes under its own root. If you split it the way I did below, 5 and 16, then on your next line, how are you going to get that 16 by itself? I, mean, I guess you could say root 5 times root 16 times root x, right? And then this becomes a 4. Then you have to move it out to the front. It just gets kind of mixed in there and smashed in between. So instead of trying to organize it like in a, in a ranking of, of lowest to highest, Always just put the perfect square in front first because that one's going to be the one that goes out in front and becomes a number. Okay, what is the square root of 16? 4, and then I still have root 5x. So like we did in the previous problem, every single one of those breaks down to have what in it? A root 5x, right? So they're all going to be... We're going to be able to add these together. Uh, no, well, which one? This square root of 4 here became a 2, but the square root of 16 became a 4. So don't do it twice. You take the square root one time. All right, now let me rewrite the problem. This becomes equal to... What? Negative 2 times, what was root 20x? 2 root 5x. Then plus 3, and what was root 5x? Just root 5x, right? Didn't change that. And then minus, what was square root of 80? 4 root 5x. And now we have all the same thing. Root 5x, root 5x, root 5x. Now we do need to put some numbers together here. Negative 2 times 2. Let's see, the 3 I can't do anything with, the 4 I can't do anything with. So I'll just go one more line. Negative 4 root 5x plus 3 root 5x minus 4 root 5x. And since they're all the same, and I've kind of cleaned up what's in front of them, I just have to look at the numbers in front. So what's negative 4 plus 3? 
Negative four plus three. That's negative one, but then take away four. Negative five. So this will turn out to be negative five root five x. Yes. You could have an x squared. Yes. Okay, so here, here's uh, your turn. Okay, you get to try something now. Let's see how you do with this. I'll give you two problems. 6 root 32 minus 9 root 2 plus 3 root 18. The second one, 4 root 3y minus 14. 14 root 27y plus 6 root 12y. So for both of these problems, simplify. So add, subtract, and simplify. Going to pause our video real quick. All right, so the two answers are there, down here if you want to look at them. And now we're going to move into 8.2. And we're just going to look at multiplying. Square roots. Now, here's what we already know coming in here. If I had a root times a root, right, if it's multiplication, that we can put those two roots together underneath, the, underneath one square root. So that works both ways, right? We kind of talked about this. You can take two roots and make them one, or you can take one root with two things multiplied and turn them into two. So that would work both ways, right? Okay. What we're going to do now is just extend on this a little bit. So the first problem I want us to look at, bless you, is this example here. What is the square root of 3 times the square root of 6? Now, if this were addition, if that were addition, right, plus, you could not put those together. Why? It's not the same root, right? Yeah, multiplication does not matter what's under the root. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put this together as 3 times 6 under the root. And then, break, and then multiply those two to be the square root of 18. Right? But isn't 18 9 times 2? And 9 is a perfect square. So I could rewrite this as 9 times 2 and then split that one back apart into two roots. Square root of 9 times square root of 2. And the square root of 9 is what? 3. So 3 root 2. That's weird, right? It's weird because root 3 by itself is, is kind of what? Yes. Yep. Yep. You're multiplying and simplifying. Well, once you get to this, we're back at where we started first time we were looking at this last class. Now you're trying to break down root 18. Root 18, you think about numbers that you know, multiply to be 18. You try and use one that's a perfect square, 9 times 2. But you can't see that when you're back here, root 3 times root 6, you can't really tell that that's going to turn out to be, you know, 3 root 2. Not until you multiply them together and then break that down. So it's a little unnatural what happened there, but we need to be okay with that. All 
I'm just going to show you this one real quick. This isn't very complicated. Um, but the square root of 2 is what we call an irrational number. Does anyone know, eh, ever heard that before, irrational number? Square root, irrational numbers are numbers that when you try and write them as a decimal, like if you type this into your calculator, you get like 1.4141, something like that. And what happens is that that decimal keeps going forever and it, ne it never stops, but it never repeats. It's got this like just pattern that you can never, it does not have a pattern, I should say. That's an irrational number. This number right here is also called an irrational number. If you're taking these two irrational numbers <clears throat> that behave very strangely, you're multiplying them together using the property that we can just put them underneath one root. What's two times two? That's going to be four, square root of four. Square root of four is what? Two. Now two is a nice number, right? I can count out two dollars, two. There's no... You know, 2 is 2.0, and they're all zeros the rest of the way, right? So you have two numbers that are very awkward, square root of 2, square root of 2. They're irrational. When you multiply them together, you get a nice integer. Yes? I bring that up because at my, <clears throat> at my wedding, my best man was my brother, and he's an engineer, and I'm a mathematician. And so his best man speech was talking about my wife and I coming together and that by ourselves, we were irrational. It was like a, a poem. It was like square root of two. Uh, you know, I am square root of two. I am, you know, alone. No one understands me. I'm just crazy. And then I meet this other square root of two and we come together and we become something very simple and nice. And anyway, it was, it was a pretty good little thing he did. But if you didn't understand all this, you were just sitting there just like, give me another drink, man. Give me another drink. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's, that's one form of multiplication. Let's take a look at another problem. What if I had a uh, negative three root six in parentheses times, how about two root 12? Do you see any addition or subtraction here? No, it's all multiplication, isn't it? That's, that's why I asked, do you see any addition or subtraction? Because if you don't see pluses and minus between terms, then there is no distribution. It's just multiplication. So watch the way I'm going to do this. Since there's no addition, subtraction symbols between terms, I'm going to write this as negative 3 times root 6 times 2 times root 12. So all I did was drop the parentheses and put dots between everything to kind of stress that this is all multiplication. And then I'm going to take my things that don't have roots and put them together, multiply them. So let's take our 3 and 2 and multiply those, negative 3 and 2, and multiply those together to get negative 6. And then on my roots, root 6 and root 12... I can actually multiply those together if I wanted to right now also, right? Put them underneath like this. Couldn't I do that? And what is 6 times 12? 72. So I have negative 6 root 72. Now, we would be done if you could not break 72 down. But you can. What does 72 break down to be? And look for the biggest perfect square, 36 and 2. Do you all agree? Most people would say 9 and 8, but 36 and 2 will work also, right? How many of you would have said like 9 and 8? Yeah, probably. let me go with 9 and 8 just because I think that it's good to show you what, what would happen if you do 9 and 8. It won't be wrong, you'll just have one additional step. Okay, so 72 is 9 times 8. That breaks down to be square root of 9 times square root of 8. Is that all right? What is the square root of 9? 3. So negative 6 times 3 times square root of 8. Let's go ahead and multiply the negative 6 times 3 and get negative 18 root 8.
Are we done? No, why not? The eight can be broken down. Eight is actually square root of four times two, which I can now split up to be square root of four times square root of two. And what is the square root of four? Two, right? And negative 18 times 2 is negative 36 root 2. So everything here, right? This is a repeated process. I mean, we're just, we're doing the same thing over we're adding a little more to each problem, making them a little more complicated. Well, that would have been easier, much easier, because if we would have, it would have gone from here, we would have had 36 times two, which would have been negative six times root 36 times root two, but the square root of 36 is six, and then negative 6 times 6 is negative 36 root 2, which is the same answer. See the difference? Much cleaner. But they both get you to the same place. And the reason why I wanted to show 9 and 8 is more people would probably go 9 and 8. And you need to still be able to do that and then possibly have to break the 8 down again. Because sometimes you don't pick the, the perfect, perfect square. You pick a smaller one. And you still, have to, you still have to do some work. All right. Um, let's do something else here. I can, I can like feel the joy in the, in the classroom right now. How about 5 square root of 2 times square root of 18 minus <coughs> 6 square root of 9? Oh, uh, wait. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Now do you see any addition subtraction? Yes. Yeah, right inside there, inside the parentheses, that's subtraction. And because you have subtraction, anytime you have subtraction, you have to make sure that what you're adding or subtracting has the same exact root, right? That's the only way you can put them together. Also, sitting in front of all this in the parentheses is a multiplication, the five root two that's sitting in front. And when you multiply something through parentheses, you distribute, right? Distribute. So let me first ask you, can you put these two together? No. But you could break down the root 18, couldn't you? Because root 18 is actually root 9 times 2. So, I mean, this is building on itself, all right? Everything is building on itself pretty quickly here. I'm going to just right now switch root 18 to be what it is, which is 3 root 2. So I'm not going to show that work. That would be something you do over here if you need to. You rewrite it 9 times 2. You rewrite that root 9 times root 2. You rewrite that as 3 root 2. Yeah, on the other one, minus, what is the square root of 9? 3. So isn't that just 6 times 3? There's no root left on the, on the term, the second term in the parentheses. So here's where we are. 5 root 2, then in parentheses, 3 root 2, minus 18. Yeah, now we can multiply through. So I can take this right here, the 5 root 2. I can multiply it times this, and then I can multiply it times this. The x? Did you say x? Well, let's just see. I'm going to write it down all in one line just so we can see what happens to everything. All right, in the first multiplication, which I'm going to highlight yellow here, and that first multiplication, that's just 5 root 2 
times 3 root 2, isn't it? That's what it is. I'll come back to it in just a second. Then we have minus sign because of that minus sign right there. And then I'm doing this blue multiplication which will be 5 root 2 times 18. Is everyone alright with that? Now look in the yellow. In the yellow it's all multiplication, isn't it? It's all being multiplied, nothing's being added together. So just multiply. Let's do the 5 times the 3, which gives us what? 15. And then the root 2 and root 2, can I put those together because they're being multiplied underneath one root? 2 times 2? And that's going to be, I'll come back to the blue in a second. That'll be 15 square root of 4. But the square root of 4 is 2. And 15 times 2 is 30. Does everyone see how that worked out, the yellow part? Now, in the blue part, I can go back and I can do the 5 times the 18. What's 5 times 18? 90. But we still have what there? Square root of 2. Can you break down square root of 2? No. So there's nothing left for you to do here. I'm just going to bring it down the rest of the way. And that takes me to the final answer here. Now, that's it. Can you do 30 minus 90? No, because the only way you can put the 30 and the minus 90 root 2 together is if the 30 had a root 2 with it also. Think about it. 30 minus 90 root 2. What is, um, I put it right up here. What is the operation between the 90 and the root 2? What operation is that? Multiplication. What are the order of operations? Y'all remember order of operations? Parentheses, exponents. Y'all remember that? Do y'all remember that? PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is the way I learned it. So if you look it back up here at 30 minus 90 times root 2, the order of operations is that you're supposed to do 90 times the root 2 before you do 30 minus 90, right? Multiplication before subtraction. So you cannot do the 30 minus 90 and make that a negative 60 root 2. That would be wrong. So we just leave it. All right? I want to show you one more thing. Um, not a problem with this order of operations. Let me show you something with this. PEMDAS. What's the answer? The most common answers I get are 1, and sometimes I get other answers. Sometimes I get 9. Usually those are the two answers that I get, 1 and 9. They're not both correct. Only one of those is correct. So let's take, yeah, can we take a vote? Nobody feels bad if they're wrong. Is that okay? I just want to just to see how many of you want to vote for one. Okay, for nine. Okay, the correct answer is nine. Yep, that's why I'm showing it to you. Because the way that PEMDAS is taught is sometimes it's not taught incorrectly, but it's not stressed enough. And so you just think PEMDAS is the way it is. It actually turns out that with PEMDAS, the, um, multiplication and division and addition and subtraction you you do multiplication and division before you do addition and subtraction that's true but when it comes to multiplication and division you don't do multiplication before division 
you do whichever one appears first as you read it like a book from left to right. So this is always from left to right, and this is always from left to right. So when I look at this problem, I see both multiplication and division, right? I don't do multiplication first. I read it like a book from left to right, which means that I'm going to do the division first. And so I do 12 divided by 4, which is 3. Then I do times 3, and that gives me 9. And if you type this into your calculator all in one line, okay, if, you, if your calculator can do it, I don't know, some calculators can't do it all in one line. Um, but if you do 12 divided by uh, 4 times 3 and hit e enter equals, it should spit back 9. All right? Just a little FYI. So here's uh, the homework assignment. Uh, let me see. Anybody have the printed out schedule that has the homework assignments in it with them by a chance? Do you? I think I have it on my computer, but. Can you just tell me, or can I see it? Anyone who has it? Thank you so much. This is for 8.2. You can do everything up through, let me see, 53, 51, 47, 43. Okay. So it's page 539, 7, 13, 17, 19, 37, 43. So all I've done is off the homework assignment, I've trimmed off the last three problems because on this sheet, you're supposed to also do 47, 51, and 53. That's where I'll pick up next class. I haven't shown you examples of those yet. So just do those for homework. You should be able to handle all those. Do what? Right here, right here, yep. Thank you. All right, everyone. That's it. We're done for the week, huh? That was easy.